Corners is the exact point where Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico meet. I grew up going to a small town in southwest Colorado where my grandparents live, called Cortez. They call it the gateway to Navajo Nation. You can definitely sense a strong influence of Native American culture here. I think just being around that culture at a young age is what led me to become connected to it in such a strong way. I went on this trip to learn more about Native American culture and to also meet new artists who create traditional pieces, which I love. Navajo is a Spanish word, but we call ourselves the Ne. The Ne means the people. That's who we are. The way we describe Monument Valley is called Sebi Itiske. To the Navajo people, this area here, Monument Valley, it's a place that is sacred. They would go and, um, you know, do their ceremonies. You know, the Navajos will go out and uh, do their prayers. You know, our homes are face out to the east. And early in the morning time is when our people will meditate. You know, just like other cultures, they might have like a temple. Native people, they didn't have uh, like a church. They go out in nature. This is our church right here. Seeing the artists sell their pieces on the side of the road was just how it worked. You got to meet them. You almost felt a part of it in a way. To me, knowing who the artist is, where it's from, and how it's made is part of what makes it so cool. It's a traditional art form that's been passed on for many generations. On our drive, we pulled over to what we thought was a roadside market. turned out to be the first Navajo Elders Festival and we were invited to join in. They were decked out in their best jewelry. Just being in their company was really inspiring. The Navajo way is, is always turquoise. And this is a bow guard. This is a, a long time ago when we shoot the bow and arrow. That's what uh, protect the, the stream, the bow guard. To me, it's not just jewelry, it's art. I started Bow and Arrow to help carry on these traditions by supporting their art. I'm Dallin, I come from two different tribes. I'm Northern Arapaho and Seneca. Senecas are in Western New York. The Northern Arapahos are in Central Wyoming. A lot of these booths are multi-generational and so you see parents and grandparents and their children sharing booths. You know, every tribe is different. They have their own languages, their own ceremonies. There's some closely related tribes, but generally they're as different as the Brits and Japanese. And so it's really left to the community itself, and oftentimes just within families to decide who gets mentored, who gets, who has the affinity for certain things, and who's going to pick up on an art form, and then learn the skills necessary to become, you know, the, the master of their own art forms. My name is Arnold Goodluck and I come from Hauk, Arizona and I live about 40 miles west of Gallup. Uh, it's on the Navajo Reservation and um, I live on the southern portion. I have been doing jewelry uh, as a business for about 25 years now, but I've been involved with it for all my life. My father's made jewelry, his father and my, and my grandfather, in fact, I'm probably a fourth generation silversmith. Art and our culture is intrinsically tied, so being able to see What's happening now is going to help us understand what's going to happen very quickly in the future. I'm Fernando Benali, and I'm from Gallup, New Mexico. And of course, I live here in Santa Fe. A third generation Navajo jeweler, and I have about four family members that are part of the artist's uh, SWAYA organization. 
My grandmother, uh, she was a medicine woman. And so we would travel and do some ceremony. And from there, that what I learned um, from those moments, I incorporate those symbols into the artwork. Passing on the stories that I've learned, then my children get to hear those same stories and then incorporate it into their artwork. It's the intention that's important. And so that's what I pass on to my daughters is have a nice intention and a beautiful way of life. With the new day, you can choose to live in the past or you can choose to now move forward with, uh, with the new beginning. Native Americans have always lived in tune with the, with the natural world and uh, a lot of our uh, culture and religion believe that there are spirits in, in everything, whether it be uh, animate or inanimate. Uh, my name is Steve Wickwai Lawrence. Uh, I'm a Hopi Indian uh, and Assiniboine, uh, originally raised on the Hopi Reservation in northern Arizona uh, from the village of Monkopi. Native American uh, jewelry was mostly uh, uh, formed out of natural elements of our natural world, uh, bone, uh, stone, and shell. The tufa stone that we use is uh, found here in the southwest. I actually get my tufa stone from the Hopi Reservation where I'm from. What's really distinctive about the tufa cast method is, is that the piece gets the natural st texture of the stone and it really leaves a nice texture on the, on the finished piece. As a Native American artist, people appreciate not only the artwork that you produce, but the meaning behind the artwork, like um, how it relates to our cultural lifestyle and how it relates to um, how Native Americans view uh, our presence here on the earth and, uh, you know, and how we treat each other. You know, our philosophy of life has always been uh, uh, take what you need, but don't exploit it. Duffy continually said, this place is sacred to us. When you're there, you can really feel that presence of sacredness. Putting it into words of how beautiful these places are is kind of impossible. It truly is transcendent. Being able to put in the time in building a relationship goes a long way with the artists. The family bond in Native American culture is something that is valued very highly. I think what was inspiring to me is being able to experience these bonds. I learned, if you have a good intention, good will come your way.